Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's been a while since um, I've done this and been here with you, so it's good to be here and uh, see everybody's bright and shining faces. And um, today we're going to listen to a really, really cool track. It's PMP, Profound Meditation Program, Tier 3, Track 1. And it goes from kind of light delta, deeper, 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 deeper delta. So the time you get to three, it's very deep delta. And a uh, very powerful track. I've used to work with these things for a long time. So let's kind of get uh, just prepared for the meditation and uh, be aware. Good thing for meditation, be aware. So often what we experience in meditation is just the content that arises in consciousness like our, maybe our feelings, our body, our emotions, our thoughts, our kind of rigid conceptual stories about ourselves, about reality, um, and all that stuff comes up. And then one of the things that we try to do is to basically dissociate from the total identification with the forms of the thoughts, feelings, emotions, et cetera, that arise and just be there with pure consciousness, pure awareness, that great mystery. But what if we go one step beyond this? Because that's very dualistic. You have, you have the content, right? And then you have the basic pure awareness itself that field, which is a whole nother subject. Uh, this And the soul seems to be a field of pure awareness, our presence, our consciousness. They're all kind of synonyms of the same thing, but they're all localized in, the, in one area, which would be, in your case, you, okay? But basically the, 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 uh, it's kind of imagine it gas or water and it's it's there but it's not um unlike gas or water this is kind of free floating uh doesn't have form it keeps transforming and moving it's not made up of little particles or atoms or molecules it's just the same thing everywhere that's the field of consciousness and wherever you tap into it it is the same and not only is it the same, but that same, it contains everything. Just like the hologram. Does everybody know what a hologram is? Kind of? Yes? All right. Well, it's, it's a pretty amazing thing. But it's refracted light that produces a two-dimensional image, image that appears three-dimensionally. Okay? It's like, how does that happen? So all of three-dimensional information is contained on two dimensions. Yet, if you take a little piece of it, of the hologram my nose for example big nose anyway a little piece of my big nose and shine the light through that little piece it reproduces me again so every little bit contains the whole boing uh and of course that's kind of what the mystics have all been saying you know that that uh, God is a circle that's everywhere, circumference is everywhere, but the, the center is is everywhere. But anyway, all of that stuff. I'm, I'm not exactly sure how they do that, but that's what the mystics find when they get into the depths of, of the soul. So getting back to the real, original subject is the, the difference between the content that arises in meditation and the space or the essence that it arises in. Okay, so that's this and that, subject, object. But what if we, in this meditation, we take it one step further and do both the subject, the space, the awareness that the content arises in, and the content is being both the same thing. So you don't have to... Uh, uh, it's all it's all the same, or, or as the I think Nargashina, the was the second century Buddhist 
master said that emptiness is form and form is emptiness. And so the pure space of consciousness is of the same essence as all the content. And it's all empty. Well, what is empty? Empty, it means it's like nothing's there. So everything is basically nothing. And that's a kind of a weird, mysterious statement. Everything is nothing. So what does that mean? Uh, that everything is nothing? Well, kind of. But to try to understand that, think about images that you see in your dreams, right? They're really there. But they're not really there, you know? And... And in dreams, all kinds of mysterious things can happen. You can be in this part of the universe and be on the other side of the universe, wherever that is, instantly. You know, not traveling through time, not at the speed of light, just instant things like that happen. So that's kind of kind of the the essence that we see. And in um in spiritual states often, or in, in psychedelic slash spiritual states, you can see that. You can see that form is nothing but uh, just energetic, uh, noetic forms. Okay, and and so they're all all these things are 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 thought in the mind of God, as someone has said before. So think about that. And uh, matter is light frozen, right? That's what they say. It's just matter is just light that has come together in a certain form but if you go into it and you go through the atoms and the molecules and the the particles all you find is vast vast spaciousness so everything is more nothing than anything and anything is just nothing taking form so uh, the truth is things are really mysterious and that's okay and uh it comes down to the big questions. Uh, scientifically, try to think about this one. Uh, why is there something rather than nothing? It, it, it's an impossible, you can't answer it scientifically. It never has been able to do it. Um, other answer is, uh, well, it's God. And that's pretty legitimate. Okay. What does that mean? I don't know. It means it's still a great mystery. While the whole thing is here, and while the whole thing is here uh, together at the same time. So back to our meditation today, if you're not completely confused by this point. Just allow everything to uh, arise. Be aware of the sensations, the feelings, the thought forms. And not make them the enemy. Like, oh, it's just got to be, you know, just practice on pure spacious or consciousness. But realize that both these things are basically the same thing okay emptiness of form form is emptiness or in theological terms it's all god it's all allah it's all the constant i uh, my phone is it's my birthday by the way and my phone keeps um wishing me happy birthday and that's where i'm listening to recording from so it's like but again, that is form, the happy birthday wishes, and uh, the uh, the space that it arises at. Okay, so so let's see if we can just take that and realize the tremendous mysterium tremendum. I think they say in Latin, the tremendous mysteriousness of all things, and let yeah. And and whatever form arises, realizes that's the same thing. That's it's all God. It's all emptiness. It's form and emptiness are exactly the same thing. And our soul is consciousness, and consciousness is presence, and presence is essential being, and essential being is. What do you say, class? Well, I'll leave you with that one. Uh, I think Rex knows the answer, but um, he's a humble man, so he, he won't just say. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so let's let with all of that. Let's um, 
Let's meditate. So it's really interesting. Uh, kind of get down to some basic mystery of being. And um, quantum mechanics, which I'm very interested in. I used to be a graduate assistant of Fritjof Capra when I was in grad school, who wrote the Tao of Physics, who was kind of pushed a book saying, hey, look, what all these mystics have been seeing is kind of what the the scientists are finding day at the basic level of reality it was a really breakthrough 
amazing book. I think it was written in 1976 or something. But anyway, uh, very important book. And I read it and I was struggling, you know, the spirituality, God, science, all the stuff that the, the modern soul struggled with. And I found the book and it was a big help. And then later I saw this little three by five card on a, on a board at the university it says, preach off Capra looking for a graduate assistant. Oh my God. Round down right away to his home, and we talked. And he said, "Okay, let's try this." And anyway, and Pam used to come over and help sometimes too, or trip jobs and us. Really good man, good man, uh, very sincere and very really trying to do the right thing. And uh, God bless him. So, you know, we in in our modern world in our modern Western world. And let me say, that when the West, we're not just talking about a geographic location that's in the West, right? Because everything's West of something uh, or East of something. It depends how you look at it. Um, we're talking about basic uh, philosophical, scientific, technological view of the world, okay? So some of us are in the United States and, 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 and Rex and Sabi are in the Philippines, yet we share this technology, you know, I mean, you know, basic modern science, the language of mathematics, all of these things are, are a part of the Western modern identity, which has achieved a whole lot of stuff. And uh, like my watch has more computing ability than these huge rooms full of stuff. 30, 40 years ago, that were the computers with punch cards and whatnot. Um, and so there's been a lot of wealth. And I, I realize this is not true for everyone, but a large portion of the population has more abundance and more stuff and more technology and more you know, ability to practically be any place on the planet within a few hours and receive information about everything almost instantaneously. Through, through this technology that's put us together, which has its tremendous benefits and uh, got problems too, which social media and, you know, some of the poisonous toxicity that gets out and people just absorb and literally can drive some people crazy. I've seen that happen. But given all that, all that abundance that, that modernity and industrialization has created. And, um, you know, our, our primitive tribal people, uh, we try to often, we will, you know, think that was, you know, just lovely and perfect back then. And now we're all messed up. They had problems too, you know, the, the things like human sacrifice and slavery and, you know, a lot of stuff that they had problematic. But with all this abundance and stuff that we have, uh, most of us are not happy. And most of us feel alone, lost. A lot of us anyway. Suicide rates are up. You know, uh, depression and uh, the pandemic made that even more powerful. You know, because people are feeling, you know, lonely, dissociated, you know, what what is what is reality? And one of the kind of the modern view of the universe through science, uh, scientific, is that the universe is vast, 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 vast. And uh, I think it was back in the 30s that the uh, astronomer Hubble was looking through one of the better telescopes at the time. And he, he started focusing on the most distant star that he could find. And lo and behold, it wasn't a star. It was a galaxy. And all these stars that we're seeing in outer, you know, far off in our space were actually other galaxies similar to our own, bigger or smaller in some cases. And so instead of having, you know, millions of stars, we had millions of galaxies with trillions of stars. And boom, everything just expanded our vision of the cosmos. And uh, I don't think we were philosophically or, or psychologically quite prepared for that just huge vastness. And so 
um, the idea became, well, we have this huge, vast universe that we only see a small portion of, but we can kind of imagine or mathly fi figure out how big it is. It's really big. We're not sure how big it is. It's really, really big. I mean, mind blowing big. You start looking at the number of things on there. The mind, you know, smoke comes out of your ears and it doesn't compute. Um, and that it's basically a bunch of uh, basic forces, gravity, electromagnetism, uh, strong uh, nuclear field, and the weak one. And that kind of holds everything together or not and pulls it apart. And we don't understand how that stuff fits. You know, a hundred years after Einstein, we still haven't figured it out. And um, the, the new theories are not proving such a string theory. Don't are not proving to, to really represent reality as we find it experientially. Um, and so we have this vast thing. It's all inert and dead and, your little sprinklings of consciousness. Uh, well, here on Earth, we know that, you know, at least we can talk about this stuff. Materialistic scientists would say even consciousness itself is an illusion. It's just a bunch of firing synapses that just kind of randomly came together to create a human brain. It gives us the impression that we're, com we're not communist. <laughs> uh, we might be, but uh that we are uh conscious it's an illusion you know in this vast inner universe with little sprinklings of deceived beings that think they're conscious oh my god what a what a uh what a what a terribly frightening and lonely and despair filled um view of the universe that is and when we we're there when we're consciously struggling or unconsciously struggling struggling with stuff we feel very we feel very lonely we feel depressed we feel life is meaningless there's no purpose and we try to satisfy that despair and sadness with things and drugs and relationships and stuff and experiences and technology and it just doesn't work Maybe for a short time it works, but ultimately it doesn't work to satisfy the needs of the human soul, which is uh, something that we kind of lost. We lost our souls, and we thought of ourselves as self. And psychology gave us this. Western psychology teaches a whole lot of great stuff, but it didn't have, it didn't describe the soul, the basic essence, presence, what we are. And so through modernity, we evolved into these individual selves, ego selves, that felt amazingly disconnected from everything else, from God, from each other, from the world, from the cosmos, and that left us in, in great darkness and despair. Well, the good news, I think, is, is all of that, the individuation of the individual self, with a little s, uh, was necessarily part of what the universe was doing. It created this individual sense of ourselves. And then they're, you know, they're as real as anything are, but it's a it's our basic reality. The soul is is basic essence, presence, God, and in, individuated in the form of whatever this mystery that you or I are. Okay. But we came really disconnected from everything else as a, a necessary evolutionary step. Well, I think the next step is that we transcend this individual sense of self and human rights and individuals that's very important in Western thought and democratic thought, individual matters, right, to an expanded sense of reality that includes everything. Again, but we don't get rid of the individual self. As, as Ken Wilber says, we transcend, right, this little thing, but it includes it. It doesn't annihilate it. It doesn't go away. It's still there in a very mysterious and present form as if somehow we are a diamond of, of congealed spirit that has many 
it's been polished and cut in ways that it infinitely can refract and reflect and receive the light of the all and is essentially everything but at the same time it's it's you and me it's individual and there's there's in my understanding of it the the individual is sacred is important and it matters you matter in the mind of the universe in the mind of god and basically i don't think that 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 view of the universe as being this mass vast billions and trillions of of, of galaxies and stars that's inert with little sprinklings and we hope there's maybe consciousness someplace else i think the whole thing is alive the whole thing is conscious the thing is consciousness really yeah well that's what our ancestors said and that's what the great mystics are still telling us today so what does that mean that means that we are that each one of us matter And uh, getting that diamond, and as we know, diamonds, diamonds in reality, it's a great metaphor because it takes a long time and lots of pressure and lots of heat to create these, these incredible things that are very hard, that reflect light and receive light and do all this stuff. It takes a long time, but there's there's a purpose behind it. And God created it as the hologram, I think. Thank God we have we have a hologram to help us understand the deep mystery that we are that little part, little individual dinky part of the all, the everything, God, if you will. And you get into these 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 conversations. The G word is important, but it's, you know, rose by any other name is still the same. Um, we're all that, but the little you contains it all just as in a hologram and when we can experience that as i was saying earlier that we are pure essence pure consciousness pure awareness that is our soul yet we at the same time we are everything that emerges in that okay so when we can see through the fallacy of the individual isolated self and see to the individual diamond precious individual that we are and everyone else and everything else is well first of all we'll be happier you know we'll have more peace we'll have delight and awe and we will uh, see that there is a, a um, an essential love that holds everything together, that is everything, and that we are it, and we'll behave better. You know, we won't bomb our neighbors, we won't rape and kill and destroy. We'll actually love one another, and we'll share, and we'll be more compassionate and happier, and we'll realize who and what we really are, and that these strange little lives we have uh, do have meaning and purpose and that it's all there for us with, uh, with a little work as much as we can do and a lot of dumb luck, which is also called grace, all right? Help from the higher self. Yeah. So, so you matter. Okay. And your your despair, your sadness, and your loneliness, you're not alone in that. That's just where we are. But I think we're we're as that increases, we're beginning to break through into the the larger identity of ourselves that is not isolated, but connected and individual yet unitive, both at the same time. And and the deeper we go the more amazing and the more beautiful and the more uh, affirming, if you will. Good. Is it good? Yes. Um, is the nature of the universe good? Yeah, it's sacredly good. It's really, really good. So uh, keep looking inside. Take my word for it today. And uh, anyway, I think that's probably more than enough.
So anyway, God bless you guys. And thank you for your patience. And uh, yes, happy birthday. Thank you very much. You made it this far. And uh, anyway, we love you. God bless. Bye.